My next game review is a Mastertronic release from 1987 and this is a sequel to a game released by Task Set called Jammin. This game's called Beat It. So let's check it out. So this is the cover and as I said, Beat It is a follow-up to Jammin which was released by Task Set in 1983. Um, but the branding or rather the style of the artwork makes it kind of look like it's related to Street Beat. Very similar artwork, obviously by the same artist, same sort of style, even the shoes are quite similar. Uh, but there's actually no relation between those two games. Um, so let's get on with uh, looking at the cover in more detail. So we've got this chap on the front um, listening to his music on his headphones and enjoying himself. Quite nice. And we've got the uh, logo on the side as you'd expect. On the back we've got some screenshots. Looks to be some kind of a maze game or possibly a puzzle game. Very colourful anyway. And the blurb. Rockin' Rodney has made significant strides in his crucial career. Sent to collect notes for new noises from the psychedelically sectored sound sourcing system. That was difficult to say. Etc, etc. Guide Rodney through the crazy mazes. And uh, that's it for the back cover. Inside we've got some instructions, just the one page of them. So once again, it tells you how to play the game. It's got the characters, so you've got bum notes that make you drop a note and you have to collect it again. Super fast bum note makes you drop two. Distortion, loudspeaker, headphones. So basically virtually everything, all the enemies in the game are musical type things. You've also got clocks and gloom masks and policemen and all kinds of sort of things. I like that. A policeman thinks rock and roll is noise pollution. Little uh, nod to ACDC there. And uh, various other objects to pick up as well. And some loading instructions, options, and the controls. That's pretty much it. As I said, just the one page, the rest of the inside is blank. Here's the title screen of Jamming 2, as it says there, or Beat It as we know it. And uh, it says 60 mazes of musical mayhem. And then it's got the copyright, which is a Mastertronic, despite it being developed by the same people who did the version for Task Set. And uh, it's very colourful and noisy. Reasonably enjoyable SID tune there. Uh, if you press F1, you get some credits as well. If you press F1, you get some options, so you can change number of players, number of lives, uh, difficulty level, which has got some interesting values. Very difficult, no chance whatsoever. Not very difficult, but we'll still quite difficult. And you can also change the uh, gender of your character, male or female. We'll still be male, uh, and that's pretty much it for the options. So let's get on with the game. So the first level starts and as you can see it's very colourful and you've got these uh, panels that you can walk up and down on these um, red, yellow and green ones on this level. Uh, once you're on them you can't walk off them onto another colour. So you have to do that by moving along the little conveyor belts at the top there and the idea of each level is to collect all the musical notes and avoid most things although there are some things that you can pick up which uh, improve the situation for you. That skull there, for example, lowers the volume. You've got volume and time at the top there. If either of those run out, then the level's over. In fact, I think if the, if the volume runs out, then it's game over completely, regardless of how many lives you've got left. So you've got to be careful not to run into too many things that lower your volume. The uh, musical notes that are bouncing around are the bum notes, which cause one of the notes that you've collected to reappear on the grid somewhere. Uh, but aside from that, um, they're not too dangerous. And rather handily, that's the end of the first level. Collected all the notes. As you can see, all the sprites expand and it goes all colourful. And then you go on to level two, which is more of the same. That was actually the easiest attempt I've had so far at the first level, which I've actually found more difficult than three or four of the subsequent ones. So it's the same principle on this level. You can only walk on a particular colour and you have to use the conveyor belts to move from one to the other. 
as you can see there's a big green thing running around there that's a baddie which does uh, eliminate one of your lives there's also a policeman there which I'm not sure if he takes a life off you or not I can't quite remember there's a lot of running around in circles in this game there's a cigarette there which I assume doesn't do you any good uh, because quite often you'll miss the uh, section that you want to run into and then you have to do a rather laborious wander around to get back to the point that you want to get back to but again this level's actually going reasonably well at the moment oh this is getting dangerous there we go he's gone so i just got to pick up this one last note i think and then i'm done oh i've missed it annoying missed it again this is what I'm talking about when it gets a little bit annoying the um, collision detection if that's the right word for this I've actually got just run into a note and I've now got more notes to pick up than I did have still can't get that blue one that's bloody infuriating at the moment no oh, I've missed it again oh now the green thing has got me And when you lose a life from one of these sort of angry things getting you, um, not all the notes reappear on the level. Most of them uh, stay gone. As you can see, there's also some score-based power-ups to pick up, which is what I just did. Handily, oh, it's got me again now. When you get killed and the level restarts, they don't put all the notes in the same place, so it can actually be advantageous to lose a life sometimes if there's a note that's particularly hard to get to like that one was on the level I've just been playing oh no and that should be another level done so obviously in a game all about music there's some quite good music it does vary from level to level not to forever eventually you do get repeating tunes um, graphically it's quite chunky um, as befits the Commodore 64 I suppose but very colourful uh, the main sprite is quite nice as well this is the guy's called Rockin Rodney and uh, he's quite nicely animated and uh, quite a colourful chap um, otherwise it's pretty basic stuff it's just squares and arrows and things the uh, enemies and things are quite nicely drawn as well so it's quite uh, graphically and sonically quite a nice game uh, and it's quite fun to play it can be a bit frustrating at times the one thing that is quite annoying is the conveyor belts when you're on them when you run down them you don't run any faster in fact you don't move at all when you're on the conveyor belts uh, you can move up and down or left and right if there's two alongside each other but you can't run down it or back up it um, which is quite strange you'd have thought you'd, you'd be able to uh, use it to get yourself from one side of the level to the other a bit quicker, but uh, that's not the case uh, This arrow that's running around by the way. Oh, that was a loud speaker I picked up which actually increased the volume Which is a good thing. And I've just completed the level What I was about to say was the arrows that are moving around change the direction of the conveyor belts and uh, as you can see it continues on with uh, each level being slightly more convoluted than the last This one again involves a lot of running backwards and forwards the good thing about this particular level is there's nothing that kills you if I remember rightly uh, joysticks by the way when you pick those up reverse the directions which is obviously very annoying a bit difficult to demonstrate um, without you actually holding a joystick but I'm, if I'm pushing up now I'm going down pushing down I'm going up left goes right and right goes left it does uh, revert itself back eventually, so it's not a permanent thing. So I'm now on level 6 I think, or maybe it's 5, and uh, you've got new problems here because you've got light switches which switch the light off, and the light bulb which you then have to collect to switch the light back on again. When the light's off you've basically got no chance. I'm wandering around hoping for the light bulb to get close to me now. 
The conveyor belt still work when you're in the dark as well, so it just makes things really confusing. There we go, and the light's back on, so I've got some chance of doing what I need to do. You can still collect the notes and things when you're on, when the light is off, but um, it's by pure luck rather than any kind of skill. Ooh, nearly got got by the green thing then. Oh, and the light switch has got me again. Oh, and now the green stuck sticky thing has got me. So now I'm on level 6, that was level 5 the previous one, and it's more of the same. I think you get the idea about the game now. It's kind of a fun game. Uh, it's a combination of sort of action and puzzle, maybe kind of uh, the sort of thing that you might associate with a game like Bomberman, where there's a bit of strategy involved but also a bit of action and uh, moving around quickly. So uh, yeah, all in all, I'd say it's well worth the 199 asking price. 60 levels on the thing, which I'm never going to see all of, um, especially if I've only got four lives left. Uh, so plenty of uh, longevity in it. Um, this one's proving quite difficult for me at the moment, uh, but I don't see a lot of point in continuing the video unless I come across something particularly exciting on another level. Uh, so at this point, I'm going to say well worth 199 and. I carry on playing until I run out of lives, but I think that's pretty much it. Well, this level's a little bit different. I'm um, not sure what's going on with the little arrows, but basically you can walk pretty much... Oh, I see, you can only walk over in one direction. They keep changing direction. Um, but there's no conveyor belts, but there are bombs flying around all over the place. So looking quite a lot like... A, a Bomberman style game this one actually. I think the idea is to collect all the notes before a bomb gets you, which uh, is proving quite tricky. But I think I'm going to do it, there we go. And then it would appear to go back to the usual sort of uh, level that you've already seen before. So that's really it this time, because I've only got one life left, so I'm probably not going to last too much longer. <laughs> Dark side. Two, one, zero.